What if I told you that the Earth was actually flat? Governments across the world have come together to deceive the public. The North Pole is here, in the centre of the Earth, with the continents spread out over this flat plain. And there's a 100 metre tall ice wall that surrounds our flat Earth. And if you even think about going there, armed guards will be there waiting to get rid of you. Over our heads right now is a massive dome and the sun, moon, stars and everything we see in space is no more than little lights in the sky. There are now millions of people around the world who genuinely do believe this, but we proved that the earth was round over 2000 years ago with nothing more than a hole in the ground. So I guess there's just one question. Are these people serious? No curvature there to be found. How can it be a ball if nothing about it is round? Uh, NASA's definitely in on it. And we absolutely know for a fact, this ain't it. Is it an image? Because images can be Photoshop, right? You're going to notice some cartoon clouds here, or car Photoshop. We're not crazy! The strange part about this flat earth belief is that it's relatively new. You see, the ancient Greeks had proved that the Earth was round in like 500 BC, and how they did it is pretty crazy, but we'll get to that in a second. And yet, the Flat Earthers only really started emerging in the 1800s, and it all started with one main guy, Samuel Rowbotham. So it's the 1830s in England, and science is taking off. There are discoveries popping up everywhere, and technology is advancing at a ridiculous rate. But our friend Sam, he's not a big fan of all of this, and he believes that the Earth is actually flat. So he sets out to conduct an experiment to prove it. So he heads down to Old Bedford River in Cambridgeshire, a 10 kilometer long, relatively straight stretch of water. He proposed that if the Earth was really a globe, we should be able to measure the curve along this stretch of river. It should curve away from the observer 8 inches after 1 mile, then 32 inches after 2 miles, and so on. So he jumps into the river with his little telescope and watches as a boat with a flag standing 1 meter above the water rows away from him. He claimed that he could still see the boat, even after the full 10 kilometers, and his calculations were correct. The boat should have been more than three meters below the horizon. He presumably exclaimed, Eureka, and then wrote a book with his findings called Earth is Not a Globe, under the pseudonym Parallax, which is honestly pretty damn cool. It wasn't until Alfred Russell Wallace, an English surveyor, repeated the experiment, avoiding the errors made by Parallax to prove that the Earth is actually a globe. He accounted for atmospheric refraction. And so that's the end of this idea, right? No more flat Earth theories. It's so obvious that the Earth is a globe, but that's where you're wrong. And you know why? the internet. But before we get into that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that helps you to keep your online identity safe by encrypting all of the data that is sent from your device. And it allows you to access the internet via over 100 countries around our very spherical planet. My favorite way to use Surfshark is to change my virtual location to a different country so I can access their Netflix. So for example, Rick and Morty is not available on US Netflix, but using Surfshark's VPN, you can quickly change the location to Australia where it is available. So if you want to check it out and support the channel, you can head over to surfshark.deal forward slash astrokobe and use my promo code astrokobe for 83% off and three extra months for free. They offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk in trying it out. My link is at the top of the description and thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. 
I literally went and woke my wife up and told her that the earth was flat. That's why, because of my, um, my multimedia background, I knew that all that stuff could be faked. You know, take it into Photoshop, take it into After Effects. You know, just looking at that evidence, they can lie about the moon landings. They can certainly lie about pictures and satellites. And I can guarantee you that there is no curvature over distance. As we've entered the age of social media, people are free to post about whatever they want. And as a result, the flat earth theory has seen a huge increase in interest. From YouTube videos to viral tweets and even a Mr. Beast video. This idea has spread like wildfire. And I'll be honest, some of it's genuinely hilarious. And now with platforms like TikTok, where 15 second clips can be viewed by millions of people every single hour. This idea, and ones like it, are given more power than they've ever had. But hold on, surely they must have some proof that the Earth is flat, right? They must have done some experiments. Oh, they have, and let me just say, they are definitely something. In Netflix's documentary, Behind the Curve, a group of flat earthers performs an experiment that flat earthers have been using since 1836 in an attempt to prove that the earth isn't a globe. They use two boards, both with a hole five meters above water level, a camera and a torch. And by lining up the torch with the holes, the light was able to go through both holes. And if the earth was flat, no matter the distance between the boards, the light would come through the holes. And so they did it. They turned the light on, but no light seemed to appear on the camera. And I'll give you one guess as to why. Because the Earth isn't flat. My favorite part about all of this is that this very experiment was literally performed by our good friend Parallax in that same gross English river. They have honestly tried everything from laser gyroscopes. Is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. We obviously were not willing to accept that, and so we started looking for ways to disprove that it was actually registering the motion of the Earth. Taking a spirit level on a plane, using telescopes and cameras at the beach, to even using weather balloons. And yet the results are always the same they show that the Earth is a globe, or there's an issue with their experiment that physics can explain. But wait, I keep saying that we have known for thousands of years that the Earth is a globe, but how is that really possible? I mean, we only started launching satellites like 60 years ago, and that's the beauty of it. It's not really that hard to tell that the Earth can't be flat. There seems to be a bit of a common misconception that Christopher Columbus discovered the shape of the Earth. But in reality, we had known that the Earth was a sphere for centuries before he was around. The famous Greek philosopher Aristotle argued that the Earth must be a sphere based on his observations of the stars. He assumed that every star was the same distance from Earth and they appear to be moving in a circular pattern around the planet. And then along came Eratosthenes of Cyrene. Awesome name, I know. He was a geographer and a poet, and he set out to measure the circumference of the Earth, proving it was a globe. So he devised an experiment. He figured that if he could compare the position of the sun's rays in two locations, he would be able to calculate the spherical size of the Earth. He had heard a rumour that there's a well in the Egyptian city of Syene, and at midday on the summer solstice each year, the sun's rays shone down directly into the well, illuminating just the water at the bottom, not the walls of the well. And so when the summer solstice came around, Eratosthenes built a pole in Alexandria, and he observed that it cast a shadow proving that the sun was not directly overhead, but was instead slightly south. Using the distance between the two cities, Eratosthenes was able to calculate, using trigonometry, the circumference of the Earth. He measured the angle of the sun's rays off the pole to be 7.2 degrees, 
and he knew that the circumference of the Earth could be represented by a circle, 360 degrees. So using a value of 5,000 stadia, which translates to about 800 kilometers for the distance between the two cities, he found the circumference of the Earth, 250,000 stadia or about 40,000 kilometers. His calculations were less than 2% of the Earth's actual value that we can measure today. Pretty impressive given he really just used a stick. Other than this famous experiment and the stars, it's really not that hard to come to a conclusion that the Earth is a sphere. Our lunar eclipses look like this, but if the Earth was flat, they should look like this. Every other planet appears to be a sphere too, and we can see boats disappearing over the horizon. In fact, this was one of the key observations that caused Aristotle to suppose the Earth wasn't flat. Ultimately, I'm not really sure that this flat Earth belief is entirely genuine. I mean, it's clear that these people have a distrust in governments, the education system, and science as a whole, and maybe that's for good reason. But that's the beauty of science. Science can help to remove personal bias and get to the truth using observations and experiments. But it's easy to take knowledge for granted. Fields of science and technology are so complex and extravagant in 2023 that it's borderline impossible to understand for the everyday person. So maybe these people aren't stupid or misguided. Maybe there's something more that we could be doing to help them accept the truth. It is hard to say, but maybe next time you meet a flat earther, you can send them this video and maybe, just maybe, they will see the light. Don't forget to check out Surfshark VPN. The link is at the top of the description.